Welcome back to Luke the Trader and this time with Jeff Eckert here from Cascade Copper. Could you please introduce yourself and your company? Yeah, Lucas, uh, thanks for the invite and uh, the chance to talk to your, uh, your team there and your, uh, your listeners. Um, Cascade Copper is a new company. Uh, we've just started, we're less than, or just over a year old now, uh, listed on the Canadian uh, Securities Exchange uh, under the mm -hmm. symbol CASC. And uh, we're focused on copper and focused on copper in Canada. And uh, we like the jurisdiction. Uh, it's an easy place to work. We're in British Columbia and Ontario. And I think one of the biggest things these days is, you know, how to raise capital. And, and mm -hmm. we have the advantage of raising capital through um, flow through shares here in Canada. So it's, it's a, a good incentive. Um, myself, my background, I'm a geologist. I've been involved in uh, many companies in the past. Um, gold in Canada and West Africa, uh, and uh, started a couple of companies and had some very good success. One in Burkina Faso that uh, I am Gold mm -hmm. eventually took it over, and, and it's a you know 250 to 300 million ounce a, a year project. Um, but got into the copper space uh, recently, and uh, I think we can talk about that further on about why copper is so good these days. But uh, as a geologist, I understand the technical part of things, but I've also been involved in, in the capital markets and, and running private um, public companies uh, on the TSXV and uh, and just recently the mm -hmm. CS. So uh, I, th I, I think I've got the right credentials to take Cascade uh, further on and, and make it into quite a success. Mm -hmm. Can you give us a little overview of your assets and Talk a little bit about your flagship project, as well as perhaps the essays and the mineralization and the, and the grade and the ore, you know, the usual. <laughs> yes, certainly. Now, um, we've got a, a great portfolio of copper projects. We've got five, five in, our, uh, in our inventory. Uh, our flagship, we call it uh, Rogers Creek. It's located in British Columbia on the on the western side of British Columbia in a, a belt of rock called the Cascade Magmatic Arc. Now that arc uh, goes from Alaska right down through into Washington State, and it's host to many large deposits. As an example, uh, Tosico has their new Prosperity Project. That's a mine in uh, British mm -hmm. Columbia, well over a billion tons of, uh, of ore. A similar project in, in Washington State called Glacier Peak, uh, similar size, well over a billion tons. So we're in, in a, a really nice uh, belt of rocks that are known for producing porphyry systems and big porphyry systems. Mm -hmm. So that's really the appeal for us. And we've got two projects there, the, our flagship, which is Rogers Creek, and our fire mountain, which I'll talk a little bit about that later on. But uh, just to give you some highlights at uh, Rogers Creek, we've got a porphyry system that we've identified. And this is a project, we call it flagship because it's had the most work done on it. And we have the, um, the most science. We've done geophysics, we've done geochemistry, we've done airborne and LIDAR and uh, surface sampling. And, and we've modeled it in three dimensions and we've got a fantastic, compelling target that we think has, has got the juice in it. And um, so that's why it's our flagship. So that's the one that we want to drill this year. Uh, we've mm -hmm. had some surface intersections that are, are quite high, um, you know, gold and copper on surface. Uh, we've had some historic drilling that's been done. And although it wasn't, super extraordinary, it did give us an idea of actually what was there. And from mm -hmm. our modeling, after that original drilling was done, we realized that those people that did drill, it wasn't us, it was a previous operator. They came in and they were drilling based on the surface expressions. They mm -hmm. just clipped the best part of the deposits, which we un understand are there. So we're really, really keen to get on the ground and start or start drilling at uh, Copper Plateau. Mm -hmm. Now we have, as I said, we've got five in our inventory here. So I'll just quickly go through the rest of them. Um, mm -hmm. The next one, I think that is probably the most compelling for us, and we're keen to get uh, work done on the ground, is what's called Copper Plateau. And it's, again, it's in British Columbia. It's a porphyry target. 
Uh, it has seen some drilling in the past. It was done, uh, I think the last uh, drill program was 2008, so quite a while ago. Of course, it was a different uh, you know, environment back then as far as uh, markets and copper prices and so on. So um, we we found that it was sort of lying on a shelf somewhere, basically, and, and nobody had realized what it was. So we did our due diligence, pulled it out. Uh, we really like it. And what what's really impressive about this particular project is the inclusion of um, molybdenum in the in the porphyry system. And these days, molybdenum is worth you know a fair amount of money. So our copper equivalent numbers can are, are really quite good because of that. And it, all, it also has cop, uh, sorry, uh, gold and a bit of silver, but the two main metals there are, are the copper and the moly. Um, so we'd like to get on the ground and do some work there. Um, intersections from historic drilling, nice wide intersections, but what's really compelling there is the, is the higher grade sections. We're seeing really high grade sections of one to how, two. How wide seven. is that intersection? Yeah, we're looking at... Um, you know, I, I, I'd invite people to go to our website because all of the numbers mm -hmm. are there for sure. But we're looking at, you know, 10 to 15 meters of one to two percent copper and, mm -hmm. you know, uh, some significant molly numbers. Uh, so, you know, up to 0.1 percent molybdenum in these uh, intersections. So I think what's happened in the past is they just haven't drilled it enough to understand what's what's what the mineralization style is and how the um, orientation of these higher grade systems or higher grade zones within the system can be, mm -hmm. you know, add up to a, a very nice uh, mineral resource. Now, there hasn't been a resource done on this. Um, and that's one of the first things we'd like to do is uh, get in there, do enough drilling to put together a maiden resource. Now, one of the, one of the things that's probably interesting to your investors is mm -hmm. We see a lot of similarities with our project to a nearby uh, company's project. This is Kodiak Copper, uh, have the, what they call the MPD project. It's in the same Quinell terrain as, as we have at Copper Plateau. And it was a similar situation. They had a, a historic deposit. They came in with some new techniques, some new science, mm -hmm. geophysics, and did some deeper drilling. And they intersected some fantastic numbers at depth. And um, I think we could be in the same situation here where the drilling in, at Copper Plateau has only been down 250 meters vertical. And we mm -hmm. see that, that mineralization seems to extend from what we've seen in the historic data. So we think we could be, you know, in the same situation. And what's even more uh, important to the investor is that if you look at the history of uh, Kodiak Copper's share price, you know, it was quite low, maybe, you know, five to 10 cents. And now it's mm -hmm. trading all over 25, 30 cents. So um, with an, in, in, you know, any kind of drilling intercept that's decent, I think we can probably get our, our share price coming up a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, and that would uh, reward our shareholders that would get in now and the mm -hmm. existing shareholders. Um, so quickly then moving, uh, go, let's go east over to Ontario. We've got what's called the Center Fire Project. And uh, it's not a porphyry system. It's what's called a VMS or volcanogenic mass of sulfide. So it's more of a linear deposit rather than a uh, sort of a spheroidal project. Or, uh, mm -hmm. project. Um, and the upside here at uh, Center Fire is that not only do we have mineralization at surface, but we see through geophysics and through the geology that that trend continues for at least four or five kilometers along strike, and it's never been looked at. So we mm -hmm. see there's a, there's a very strong upside there for um, near surface copper, gold, and silver mineralization in a fairly wide system. Um, so we're working on getting our drilling permit ready for that, and then we're we're pretty pretty ready to go and do some drilling by i'd say fall this year a little bit more work mm -hmm. on ground uh, a little bit of geophysics otherwise we're ready to go there um and then finally our um well two more to go which maybe are are less are less advanced maybe what you would call more grassroots projects mm -hmm. that one is one of them is bendor it's in british columbia and it's more of a, a, a high-grade gold in vein system 
And uh, it's sitting really close and next to what's called uh, Talisker's Braylorn and Pioneer Mind. And uh, what is compelling there is the fact that they've outlined over 1.6 million ounces at 6.2 grams per ton in the neighboring property. So we see a lot of similarities there. Uh, we haven't done a lot of work there, but plan to do some mm -hmm. work this year. And then finally, uh, our, our Fire Mountain, which I alluded to at the first, and it's very close to Rogers Creek. Similar kind of uh, situation where you've got mm -hmm. or free mineralization on surface, uh, alteration. We've done a lot of hyperspectral uh, mapping, which is key for um, determining where you are within the porphyry system and how strong the system is. And we see all the indications of another very good, highly mineralized porphyry system there. Now, the thing about Fire Mountain is it's never been drilled. Um, there's been a little bit of surface work on it. Mm -hmm. uh, no geophysics or anything like that. And and really, it's it's um, blue sky. A product. It's a product. <laughs> what you would call a product of the climate change because it, it was mm -hmm. it's up on the top of a mountain and up to about 10 years ago, it was covered completely year round with snow. Um, there was a small glacier up there too, but because of climate change uh, that's disappeared. And then what's happened is it's really revealed, you know, all this mineralization. And so, um, as I said, nothing's been done on it and except for some surface, you know, uh, preliminary surface work. So keen to get back there, do some more surface work, maybe do some geophysics and try to put together some targets, not for this year, but probably for mm -hmm. next year. So, the, <laughs> so that long winded, but that is our, our sort of our portfolio projects. And as you can see, it's, uh, we've got quite a number of them, copper mm -hmm. related, and we're quite excited about all of them really to, you know, to get some work done and get some, get some drilling done on at least a couple of them this year. Mm -hmm. And you have just recently announced funding for drilling, as you said, um, mm -hmm. or at least the drilling part, right? Uh, is there a hope to essentially get the share price up with those drill <laughs> results, uh, as you already said? Yeah. Yes, and, and I think that's that's kind of the, uh, what you call the business uh, model for a junior exploration company is to, mm -hmm. you know, try to add value with every financing that you do. Um, you know, you want to put the money into the ground. You want to get some work done and ideally you want to get some drilling done. Um, and hopefully, and I'm, I'm pretty confident that, you know, the science that we've done to get to this stage, to set the targets is, is the proper science and that the drilling will come with success, but you know, it's, you're always second guessing mother nature. So you have to put a caveat in there that uh, nothing is, nothing is sure until you've got, the results in your hand. So, but we're pretty confident we've got some great targets to test at, mm -hmm. at all of our projects. Mm -hmm. And what would be the long-term goal perhaps? Is it just further defining those resources and perhaps establishing a deposit in the near future and doing some studies or what is the general plan? Is it just a standard sort of uh, framework? Yeah, I, I, I think our, our short-term goals will be to, um, close the financing. Uh, I think we're confident with the flow through shares. Uh, there seems to be quite an appetite for that these days. Uh, we can get the money that's needed for drilling two of our projects, um, Center Fire and uh, Rogers Creek. Um, so that's sort of the main goal in the, in the short term. Uh, longer term is then to develop uh, our other projects by, you know, doing some more ground geophysics some more ground sampling and then bring them up to a, a drill ready stage as well. Mm -hmm. um, and, and one of the things that seems to be happening, and we can probably talk about this a little bit more, is that um, there are, are some of the companies like the, the, the major producers and the um, developers and even Australian um, uh, exploration companies, because their markets seem to be a little more frothy over there, they've got money to spend. They're coming and they're looking at projects like ours in mm -hmm. Canada um, to do some kind of a deal, whether and it's up to us to decide how the deal will work. But it could be, um, you know, an option, a joint venture uh, per uh, purchase or a small equity interest in the company, that kind of thing. So these people are seeing the opportunity in the markets now. So um, we're keeping our doors and eyes open, ears open for, you know, that kind of um 
uh, interest in seeing how we can take advantage of that down the road. Mm -hmm. And why copper? Like, why did you why did you choose to work in the copper space instead of the, the other precious metals? Or, well, you know. Yeah, it's uh, it's a good question, and I, I I'd like to think that I was ahead of the curve. Uh, about five years ago, I I could see the fundamentals of the copper market changing, um, and I think. Probably it was started because of the, the general trend towards vehicle electrification. Mm -hmm. uh, but when I look deeper into it, it wasn't just, you know, people buying Teslas that was going to drive the market. It was, it was uh, a, a trend to move away from fossil fuels on, on all levels. Um, you know, here in Canada, even the government is giving you incentives to move away from fossil fuels and go to, mm -hmm. you know, relying more on electricity. So the electrification of uh, not only North America, but other countries, uh, emerging countries like India, um, and then the continent of Africa. I mean, I've spent time in Africa as well over the years, and just seeing the change and the development in these emerging uh, economies is amazing. Mm -hmm. and, and with that, um, you know, change and that uh, development comes the demand for copper in many forms, you know, whether it's the electrification of a grid, if it's uh, plumbing in a house, it's electric motors in your appliances, you know, this, all of this trend heads towards a strong demand in copper. And what's happened is the industry hasn't been able to keep up. They haven't been able to develop the copper projects and the copper mm -hmm. mines to match that demand. So, there's going to be a, sh uh, a shortfall and with shortfall comes uh, copper price increase. And with mm -hmm. copper price increase, then comes the interest in developing new projects. Um, mm -hmm. And the companies that are looking for replacing their assets are looking further down the, the food chain. You know, they're coming down to the, you know, companies that have either uh, resources or are excellent prospects. And with regards to that, we've had, major companies come to us and we've signed CAs with them about some of our projects already. So the, the interest is there for our type of, mm -hmm. uh, of uh, project, our type of company. So um, that's the reason why we see copper as a, as, as a good commodity to be involved in for at least the next decade. Mm -hmm. And you're essentially seeing this shortfall in the near future, at least in terms of, uh, the supply and demand balance. Yeah, I mean, I think just about anywhere you read these days, whether it's a Bloomberg or a JP Morgan or any of the analysts in the Canadian markets or European markets, they're all predicting, you know, the the shortfall in in the supply for copper. Um, you know, on a on a day to day or week to week or month to month basis, that can fluctuate depending on. Mm -hmm you know, where China is and how much demand is coming out of China. And I, I think people use that because it's it's been the dri driver in the markets over the last four or five years. But what I'm saying is that there's there's other economies and there's other demands that are outside of China that mm -hmm. are, are going to really drive copper prices. I mean, uh, China is still going to be part of the equation, but it's not going to be the only part. So. I, I see fluctuations in the early, you know, the next maybe year, but I think we're still going to be around. I mean, this is a prediction. It's just mm -hmm. an opinion at this stage. Uh, yeah, I think we're still going to stay above the $4 range, even with mm -hmm. the, you know, the copper fluctuations and demands out of China. But I still... And money closers. <laughs> yes. And, and I think, you know, in the long term, I think we're going to see much nor further north of that, that price going forward mm -hmm. and since we are at the end of our interview are there any last remarks or things that you want to highlight about your company yeah i would i would say more of a summary than anything else is that uh, you know cascade copper is a is a young a new company um and because of that we've got a very tight share structure we're only 33 million shares at the moment and um we you know any kind of success we can get uh, a, a, f 
fairly healthy increase in our, our, in our share price. We've got five projects in our portfolio. Any one of them probably could be a, a real company maker. Um, big porphyry systems can attract the attention of big companies. So we see, you know, maybe a partnership uh, on one or, or two of our projects down the road. Uh, we're not going to give away everything. Um, we want to do some organic growth ourselves. We want to, you know, provide our shareholders with, uh, you know, good success from their money into our projects. But you always have to, you know, balance the the dilution of the company with uh, value that you're adding. So I think we'll have, you know, a, a good balance there. Mm -hmm. And uh, I invite your listeners and viewers to come to our website. That's uh, www.cascadecopper.com. And if you do want to contact me directly, you can uh, email me at info at cascadecopper.com. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that. I will certainly put this in the description. And okay. Jeff, it was great listening to you. I appreciate taking uh, your time of the day. And for next time, perhaps we <laughs> may arrange something again. Okay, very good, Lucas. I look forward to that.